So so y'all are y'all are in Texas right now, getting ready to go out there and and shoot some pigs, getting ready to just basically, you know, just tickle your itch a little bit for deer season, huh? Yeah, we're gonna try to. We've uh, it's been tough the last few days. We've only we've for sure killed four, three via thermal, and one with a bow. And yesterday we really got whooped. We uh, we decided to to ditch the private land and go to public and uh and that was just all for naught we did a lot of walking uh got bit by mosquitoes and dodged snakes and alligators <laughs> <laughs> that so, sounds like a low season in mississippi brother <laughs> <laughs> it's uh which you get eaten by mosquitoes that's, that's here yeah where we're at looks very very similar to where you're at I yeah mean, it honestly is exactly the same. But Ted was just saying it yesterday. We were driving to driving to where we were going to go, and he's like, it honestly looks exactly like where a buddy of ours' house we stay at sometimes when we turkey hunt in Mississippi. He's like, it looks just like his place. Yeah, it does. And it, it does. But, yeah, that's what we're doing right now. We're just sweating it out and trying to kill some pigs. Hey, I like it, man. I like it. That's, that's, uh, that's about all you can do around here right now. Most people – Caleb and I know most people here are getting geared up for dove season. So mm -hmm. everybody's going to the local co-op and buying all the wheat that they're not going to bait with. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, they're, they're, yeah. It'll all be gone weekend of dove season. But hey, I, do, I do know what ain't, ain't alligator season starting like in August. Y'all do any of that? Uh, well, the Texas alligator season for us is like in April. Um, Ours is weird. It like Louisiana, everywhere else starts, and I'm on the Louisiana line. Like, I mean, I'm only 20 miles from Louisiana. And their season is August, I believe, and uh, ours is in April, which doesn't make any. Actually, me and my buddy Colton were just talking about how nonsensical it is that our season is what it is because we're talking about trying to kill one this upcoming year, but um, we don't know. If it was if it was in season yesterday, we'd have had one. Had him easy, dead to rights. He tried to run away, from him and he he got too freaked out, and he was he wedged himself in between a cypress tree and a cypress knee, and he couldn't get through there. So he just kind of stuck while they watched oh, yeah. him. Jumped oh, up his feet last night. That's one of those things that you cannot mess around with. Like you've got to be so legal because I've got a a buddy of mine that his friend um, just being. A dumb kid you know when we when us guys that like to get out here and hunt and fish when we get to those teenage years we just we don't even know the laws yet really fully and we're like ah, i'd be okay well that's what they did with gators and they ended up catching a gator just killing it and um this dude took his dad's bulldozer and had it slung up in their driveway in front of their house and they're just <laughs> a gator, no tag, out of season. They're just like, man, yeah, we got us a gator. We're taking pictures with it. And he said all of a sudden, like, 10 cop cars and four game wardens and everybody just floods the yard. And somebody <laughs> drove by and saw it and called him in. And, dude, it was terrible. It was like – he said, thankfully, his dad had had some connections or he would have gone to jail legitimately gone to jail and not prison or nothing, but he, he ended up having to pay some hectic fines. And that's when I learned that, um, yeah, I'm not going to be messing with these gators around here. Just kind of, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to let them do their thing unless they bother me, but I try to stay out of it. But I have noticed now here, there's some spots here that if you can find the gators, probably find some decent deer, probably find some decent turkeys. It's kind of yeah. weird how it works, you know? Yeah, it's kind of, kind of like going to public, and the, the methier the public access is, like, if it looks like meth activities going on, some weird houses and stuff, the hunting's going to be better, always. <laughs> Duck hunting, deer hunting, turkey hunting, there's always more the methier it is. So, yeah. So look look for the crack house. house. Yeah. That's, that's uh, <laughs> yep. They, there's probably a corn pile there, because <laughs> all the meth heads around here deer hunt. So, yeah. You know, there's 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 probably some some corn somewhere around, but uh, so so guys, let me ask y'all, Nick, you're from Texas, right? Yep. What part? Where we're at in Texas? I'm from Marshall, so it's uh, northeast Texas, right off of I-20. 
um, like 30 minutes from Shreveport, Louisiana, uh, about an hour from Texarkana. Uh, so just right up in the corner of the state. Okay. And Ted, what about you? Where are you from, Bubba? I'm from Iowa, right around like Cedar Rapids, Iowa City area in Iowa. Okay. So All like right. Eastern Iowa, I guess it would be. There you go. Okay. I was like, I have no idea. I'm going to have to Google this <laughs> real quick. What's like the craziest? I mean, because y'all are, I say fan reaction, but or fan deal that y'all had. But I mean, I got to look at it and y'all got nearly 700,000 subscribers on YouTube. Um, I don't know if there's a bigger hunting, like strictly hunting channel, not outdoor, but hunting channel on YouTube is bigger. Uh, so y'all are, if y'all ain't the biggest, y'all are one of the biggest. What's like the the craziest fan interaction y'all had in the woods? You know, Ooh, like in the woods. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Uh, you had to come up to somebody. A and bunch. Like, How many? <laughs> I could. I just think of one that's funny to me, but I want to see if you have any prior to because I've only in this. I mean, I'm still in my infancy of doing this with him. So I don't have as many experiences, but uh, surely you've got one. While I you're can't think of any in the woods hardly at all, but I mean, I can't think of anything crazy necessarily, but we've run into a few people that just were like, Hey, you're, you're the hunting public guys. When you walk up on them in the woods or whatever, seems yeah. like anytime you're at a public parking lot, somebody pulls in, you're like, well, they might know who we are. But have I can't think of anything crazy in the woods that's happened. Have you have you caught anybody like you met them at the parking lot and you noticed they're like following y'all kind of like in the woods or like <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 No, actually it's that's funny. All right. So last year we were hunting and uh unbeknownst to me and Ted, which I was filming Ted, uh, the guy that we were about to meet had met Warb the day before, so he knew we were around. And he's hunting the same area, and he saw Ted's car when he was going in to hunt. So I don't think he even hunted. I think he just hung out, and he's like, I'm just going to chill, and I'm going to, you know, talk to him when I get back. So we, after dark, we come back, and we meet this guy. And, and he was, honestly, he was hilarious. You remember who I'm talking about? <laughs> no, I don't remember. <laughs> Anyways, we get to talking to this guy, and uh, he's just going on. He Like, we're FaceTiming with this with his oh, kids okay, I I mean, we're that. talking to the whole family <laughs> it, was, it was an awesome encounter honestly uh and then he started telling us about how uh the year prior he had gone through he had prostate cancer and he was in the hospital and he was like uh, giving us props because he said i'm really glad y'all do these daily like in early part of turkey season we do like almost daily video we really we do do daily videos for the first couple weeks and we're just putting like we hunt that morning, we kill a turkey that morning, you'll watch it that evening when you get home from work. And he was telling us how he really enjoyed that while he's in the hospital bed. And that kind of kept him motivated. And uh <laughs> so um, you know, he's telling us about all this. And I was like, we're getting ready to actually depart and go separate ways. And I was like, hey man, you know, I'm I'm glad to hear you're back in the woods and good health and everything's fine. And you know, it, it you didn't let it keep you down. He was like, oh, hell, man, it's fine. I'm smarter than I was before. My dick don't work anymore, but everything else is fine. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, you can oh, maybe man. bleep that if you want oh. to. But, <laughs> but uh, that was probably my favorite encounter in the yeah. woods. He was one of those guys where it was like, you'd think he was getting to the end, and then all of a sudden he'd spark back up, and it would go for another, like, 10 minutes. And oh. eventually we got back in the car and we were driving out of there and he was in front of us and he just got out of sight. And Nick was like, he's going to stop again and talk to us before we get out of there. <laughs> and so we're going, we were driving for like five minutes and we come around the curve and there he was sitting there parked up <laughs> alongside the road and he's waving. He's like, come up here. So we pull up alongside of him and he was on the other like, 30 minute rant <laughs> so y'all were okay so y'all were on like wma or whatever and y'all were gravel roading it out or whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. You like you you didn't have a passing lane that you could get no, away from. there was yeah. no way we could exit out and get back to the main road and he got out of sight and i was like ted he's gonna stop up there and he's gonna ask us another question i guarantee it yeah 
And sure as hell, we come around the corner and he's sitting there just full wave. He's like, come on, <laughs> get up here. But you know, but you know, like that made his day, year, whatever. He's like, man, I got to, I got to speak to THP boys. That's awesome. Oh, I mean, it was, he, he stopped us because he was asking us if we were going to be at NWTF. He said, y'all going to NWTF? We're like, yeah, we'll be there. He said, I'll see you. And he showed up and he came, he brought his sons with him, everything. It was, it was oh, like, that's cool. So y'all yeah. well, obviously you remembered him. How can you forget a guy that you feel like yeah. you've known for an hour through conversation? That's yeah. That's yeah. cool. That's that's the I guess that's probably from a hunter standpoint, getting big in the hunting industry. Um when it comes to getting into the woods, that's a that's a that's something you guys are, are going to, it's only going to get worse for you guys, you know, because I feel like public land hunting, I feel personally, um, I've been keeping up with THP since, uh, Ted, when did y'all, when did y'all start? 2017? Yeah, I joined in 2018, but the first year that the everybody else did it was 2017. Okay. When I started watching No Homo was when you joined, okay? Uh <laughs> When you joined, that's that's the season that I got my saddle, and that's the season that I started really – because I, I remember telling my brother, like, dude, you got to check these guys out. All they do is hunt freaking public land, and it's just like us. And uh, and then y'all just, you know, blew up. And um, – but when you're, when you're in the woods, that's a lot of times as people, it's our sanctuary. It's kind of like it's our getaway, you know, but it's only going to get worse for you guys because the bigger you get, you're going to run into guys. And I guess that's the only, not the only, but that's a, that's a, maybe a little bit of a negative when you get out there and you're ready to hunt and then you see that truck pull up behind you and you're like, oh, yep, he's walking up to the door. This, they know our truck. You guys are going to have to like, rent cars or something you know and and you know do something because people are just going to start bombarding you in the woods but yeah. uh that's I crazy keep all the stickers i don't put any stickers on my car or nothing like that just to try and keep it as low key as i can but yeah it's recognizable if you watch the video people people still pick you out yeah oh yeah and I, i'm gonna tell you yeah yeah i'm gonna tell you man like i have done some I have done some detective grade investigations on hunting channels. Like when y'all were down here hunting, uh, I looked at the video and I was like, I called my buddy immediately. I was like, John, they were at the same parking lot that we were at 24 hours later. Like me and John <laughs> left where Warp killed his deer we, me and John were in that area. I missed yeah. a six point. I missed a six point. John pulls up and shoots it. And we're walking out and everything and get out there. And uh, we taught some guys at the parking lot. Don't think nothing about it. And then two or three days later, or it might have been four or five days later, y'all released a video when Warb killed that buck. And as soon as it come out, I started watching it. And I called John immediately. I was like, dude, did you? And he's like, he interrupts me. He's like, that's the same parking lot. <laughs> like, I know. I, that's that's what's crazy is is we get on there and we see we see people hunting. And especially when it gets in your area, uh, mm -hmm. start deep diving. And you're like, all right, hey, freeze frame right here. Like, you know, y'all got the camera on y'all in the car, but the windows you can see through and uh -huh. people are just like, wait a minute. I think I saw a sign. Zoom in on that. And let's Google that. You yeah. Know? Which I know y'all have gotten some hate for like quote unquote burning spots and all that kind of BS and everything. Um, y'all, I heard, I heard somebody was talking about on a, on a podcast that, um, uh, that y'all had, you know, y'all over time, y'all gotten some hate on, doing that burning spot. So I remember, I think it was a video with you and Jake, Nick, um, y'all were having to blur out the windows, you know? Yeah. I don't remember where this was. Was it turkey season or deer season? I think it was still deer season. Um, it, I, yeah, I think it was, but yeah, we were, we were, we put a blur on the windows and we were driving around just to make it a little less noticeable. I mean, what, at what point though, do you, do you stop and say, like, hey, look, this is, excuse me, we can't, we can't put a black bag over the camera and just get in a tree. Like, you know, we, we, you know, 
hey, if they're, if they're going to figure it out, they're going to figure it out. You know I mean? You I mean, can't do much more. It's kind of like a 50-50 deal because I know in the last year or so, we've made a conscious effort to not say states as much. Yeah, I've seen that. You know, and we've had people – get upset that we're not telling because people want to know the state for it's part of the story for like as a viewer if you're watching the video you want to know like what state is that in so how can i relate it to my hunting experiences and and, and put it together and, and you know i think it's part of people's learning processes too um is being able to connect that and so they get upset when you don't do it but then when you do put a state on there somebody's like you're burning up my state you know everyone hates you yeah. blah, blah blah so it's I, uh I had I had buddies that I had talked to that after y'all come down here and hunted or killed the buck and, and I had buddies that yeah they're like oh well I'm not gonna name it but that certain place it's done hunting mm -hmm. public come down here it's done I'm like dude do you not realize first of all how big that place is and then how many deer are on that place and then you know it's like I mean now I, I mean I I get you know, where people don't love it, where you take a picture in, with a big deer or a fanned out bird in front of a sign, a WMA yeah. sign, like this is not an outfitter. Come on. Yeah. But, yeah. um, but it's like only the local boys know about this, you mm -hmm. know, the only the true local boys that hunt here all the time know where you're hunting. You yeah. know, you, you gotta, you gotta be very, very familiar with an area to, to see something like one road, you know, like what I'm talking yeah. about. And be just like, to see a tree and know that that's that bent over tree that you drive past every yeah. time you go in there. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. You know, it's so, funny you, you mentioned that that video of Warb killing that buck because you then you made a video like a spoof of that and of your you and your buddy's conversation, and that's the first time I ever saw any of your videos. My brother in law sent it to me. He's like, "You got to watch this." So I watched it and I laugh. So I sent it to Ted and Jake and Warb and everybody else, and Warb thought it was awesome. Well, then I was like, well, I got a perv on this guy a little bit. So then I start scrolling through your Instagram, and I'm going through, and I was just telling Walker this this morning. I'm going through, and I see a video of yours, and you're wearing a 13th Mew hoodie. Yeah. And I was like, okay, wait a minute. I'm going to have to investigate. So then I sent you a message and said, hey, were you on the 13th Marine Expeditionary Unit in 2016? And he said, yeah, I was. So – small world you know the, the world is small and then the marine corps makes it even smaller so oh, small world is that me and you were on the same deployment never even knew it separate units separate everything you were <laughs> you were with lar i was i was attached to second lar okay yeah they were they had the, the majority i think fox company was mm -hmm. i think that's who it was two seven fox company uh and, and second lar there's two one yeah, it's two one. Okay, two. I, hey, my bad, my bad. I just know, I just know. You know, I was with second LAR, and we may or may not have beat y'all in football. But anyway, that was in UA. <laughs> uh, now, um, yeah, that that was crazy, man. When you text me that, because like my when you when you sent me that, first of all, you know, you kind of perved on me, and then I kind of fanboyed, and I was like, because I saw your name, and I was like. And I just started like beelining to my wife in the house. And I'm like, you got to look and see who we're on the same freaking deployment. And uh, I called my brother, I called my <laughs> uncle, I called my dad. I'm like, freaking THP has been deploying with me, baby. Let's go. I mean, <laughs> oh, it was, yeah, it was cool. But um, so you, you, and you were on the New Orleans. I was yeah. on the boxer yeah. and y'all got to go to all the cool places like Thailand. Dubai. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I had to – dude, we had – when y'all were in Dubai, we had nine guys get medevaced out of UAE desert because it was so stinking hot. Yeah. Yep. Somebody had to Somebody had to do the work, and somebody had to go to Dubai and drink the beer. And see, <laughs> and the only reason I would say that to you on here is because you're a grunt and I'm a pogue. And yep. it's just payback time, okay? Ted, Ted and, and Caleb probably don't know nothing about that, the whole grunt and the whole pogue. All right, so the grunts are the infantrymen. Everybody, everybody in whatever branch, Army or Marine Corps, if you're infantry, you're everything. Everybody else literally is there to support you. I mean, that's de by definition, right, Nick? I'm not yep. being – that's it. You're support. Yep. 
So Pogue is person other than grunt. And uh, it could possibly have a derogatory uh, meaning to it at times, but uh, I understand that. But yeah, so that's why, that's why I tell that, that story right there. Cause you know, I can't let you be the big dog the whole time. You know what I'm saying? I got to jab when I can jab. You know? Yeah. Somebody's got to bring me bullets. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I, I was on the radio, okay? I, I had the radio in the pack. I wasn't, like, at the desk writing out letters, you know? Uh, I wasn't supply, okay? Which they love to say, bullets don't fly without supply, but that's, you know, True. you know they never missed the chow hall, that's for sure. Anyway, we'll edit that part out. <laughs> so, with deer season coming up, I got a question for y'all. How do y'all decide, like, where y'all are going to hunt like do y'all just go out and go like for states wise or do you try to follow the rut or like what what's the plan just kind of go with it yeah we usually we try and come up with a game plan before the season like right now we're still trying to figure stuff out because we actually like this year we have a couple elk tags in the group for wyoming and um so that takes a big part of September. So we'll, that's kind of going to be our main focus, I would say. And we'll have a deer state somewhere in there, probably the beginning of September. And then we always have like Iowa tags, Missouri tags, and then wherever anybody else kind of speaks up and says they want to go to this state or that state, then we'll, you know, try and fit that in wherever it makes the most sense, I guess. But like right now we don't have a real, set plan or anything and then once everything starts even if we do have a set plan everything changes yeah a lot because you might kill one the first couple days and then or you might be there for a week yeah states get added on or taken away super easily because yeah. you know like you said you kill a deer the first day and then it's on to the next then you're like okay well this state was my third one on the list i wanted to do but now let's let's go hit that because we got free time yeah or you go somewhere like we did last year and you go for 10 or 12 days don't fill a tag go back reset for a week or so go back for another 10 or 12 days yeah. don't fill a tag and it's like you just keep beating your head against the wall trying to fill that tag or or you're chasing other tags because you, you feel some super quick so we'll see about middle of september we'll kind of get an idea of how things are going to fall based off of how those first couple of trips go. Do y'all, uh, are y'all giving yourselves now, like, are you, are you lessening your states down and spending more time in each state than you were three or four years ago? I feel like three or four years ago, y'all were three, four days into a state and then you were bam on to the next one. Yeah. Yeah. We've definitely, we've tried to cut it down a little bit because we, when we were, like you said, going from state to state, like hitting a bunch of them, we were having a lot more unfilled tags, basically. So we kind of narrowed it down where everybody has like one or two tags basically going into the season. And then mm -hmm. if you fill those, then, you know, go hit up another state and try something else. But we're trying to kind of narrow it down and focus more on the tags we got, I guess. Yeah. How Is long do you Go ahead, Caleb. Is it is it like do y are y'all mostly all together? Do you have kind of your crews that you like? You know how many how many people are part of THP as far as like how many members? Me, you, Jake, Ward, Zach, Greg, Aiden, Mindy, Crystal. Mindy, Crystal. So there's nine. There's nine people. I guess you could say nine that are involved in like on pay. Yeah, and then we've got two new interns this year, Walker and Colby, who are sitting right over here in the other room. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but actually, last night the new the introduction video for the new interns just came out, kind of telling who they are. So that's pretty funny. If you yeah. haven't seen that, you could give that yeah. a watch. Yeah, I gotta watch that. <laughs> I got to watch that. What so about the, in total? There's eleven of us this fall. So how many? So it's mainly just it's mainly just y'all two. Zach, War, Greg, Jake. Zach, War, Greg, Jake. It's mainly six of y'all hunting, right? Yeah, most of the time, yeah. I mean, I it, know I know y'all bring – I know Jake will do a Wisconsin hunt every year with his brother. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. He does. Yeah, he does. Everybody kind of goes home and does their own deal every year. And then Hayden, he comes in and out. It's, it's, the fall gets tough for Hayden because he he's the brand and merchandise manager. So he runs all the orders and everything that are coming in. So especially closer to Thanksgiving and Christmas, he gets swamped. So he gets, gets out early and gets his hunting in. But he'll bounce in and out with us, you know, and come help out and film or we film him um, whenever he's got the opportunity. Yeah. What about um, Nick? I'm, I'm sure you did too. Like me and Caleb, obviously coming from Mississippi, we grew up mainly just deer hunting. There was no, like, I think, is Zach from Colorado? No, he's from uh, Ohio. Ohio. Okay. Somebody said, anyway, thought he was. Um, did all of you guys grow up just mainly deer hunting? All the guys on, on the, on the crew, they mainly grew up deer hunting or did they, so yeah because everybody was from like the midwest pretty much yeah i mean everybody from the midwest like i know you didn't duck hunt much growing up no jake really didn't warb did a did a bit mm -hmm. uh zach didn't uh greg did a little bit like duck hunting and then i, I think everybody turkey hunted a fair bit it, you know yeah. growing up um i know i i for me growing up i was pretty evenly split three ways i deer hunted a, a fair bit and then i would duck hunt a fair bit and then i turkey hunted um mm -hmm. a fair bit but it, i mean everybody did a little bit of everything but i'd say deer was probably always like the bigger thing everybody yeah. did i'd say greg might have been the most diverse growing up mm -hmm. once he because he was traveling around like doing antelope and Maybe a little bit of elk. Not yeah, elk. maybe a little bit. And he does like some upland bird hunting. Yeah. Things like that. So he definitely has a a wider knowledge of different types yeah. of hunting, I would say. Yeah. Well, the reason I asked that is because y'all did your first elk hunt, what, three years ago? I think right? the first elk hunt on THP was 2019. Me, yeah. and, me and Zach went to Colorado with the born and raised guys. That's yeah. right. So I've had my buddies from out West tell me, you know, there's nothing that compares to elk hunt. And I just kind of tell them, I, I've never done I'm saying this very ignorantly. Okay. But I'm, I'm just like, man, I just feel like me br br bringing up being brought up deer hunting 140, 50, 60, big, big, big buck would be more fulfilling to shoot than a big elk. So with y'all being primarily kind of growing up the same way, what was y'all's experience when it comes to going elk hunting? Is it is it what they say it is? Is it just the best thing ever, uh, or is it a close second? To, oh, to I'd, I'd say it's the best thing ever, probably. My opinion, I love really? it. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. Better, it's better than turkey hunting. Yeah, probably. I'd say. It's just it's just a whole nother level of like you're out in the mountains, you're out there, you might you're packing in maybe for like the first trip we went on, we packed in for like six days and you're just out in the mountains constantly chasing elk. And then if you get in on a, a bull that's bugling and then he comes in and you're talking back and forth to him like you would turkey hunting, it's mm -hmm. pretty pretty hard to beat that, I feel like. That's like the so, real rarest form of hunting right there. Mm -hmm. So it's it's like the experience of it is what makes yeah. it so awesome. Yeah, and it's yeah. like you're by the – like the first trip I went on with the born and raised guys, I didn't really know what I was doing at all. And I remember I packed like the same meals for like the whole day, and I didn't bring near enough. So by the end of it, I was like so beat and so hungry. And I guess that to me, like after it's all said and done – it's just real that's satisfying, I guess, just to say that you went out and did that. So now you say, you say packed in six days. Yeah. So all right, I'm 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 trying to understand this right. You talking about y'all, it took you six days to get to y'all's hunting location, or y'all were just hunting six days in the mountains? Hunting six days in the mountains. We all okay. had like big frame packs on and you throw water in there, you had like a water filter so you're filling up in the streams filtering water had all your food on your back your camp everything and just yeah. we're out there and then wherever we'd end up at the end of the day then we just throw our 
tents up and camp there for the night and then get up and start hunting again. How many miles do you have y'all sales? Y'all didn't use like horses or anything? Uh uh-uh. uh. No. <laughs> Yeah, how many, how many miles? Do that? that'd be nice if you had a horse. <laughs> yeah, oh, it'd be great. Yeah, I'd be like, kind of like riding a car on a WMA, you know. Yeah, uh, how, how many miles did y'all cover in those six days? Um, I, I don't know for sure on that, and I couldn't tell you, but we basically went into a huge there was like mountains on the right side, and mountains on the left, and then we basically went all made a huge giant loop and then back into the parking lot did you train before you went like did you try to like i don't know get out and walk more <laughs> no, i knew that I answer. no uh-uh. <laughs> yeah, no. why do you say it like that why do you say it like that it sounds like taya's got kind of a reputation about well, i just i just thinking back to i mean i i didn't know him back then but just I've known him long enough, I could think back and be like, no, he didn't do anything for that. No, I just threw the pack on and went for it. Yeah, he just threw it on and went. Maybe now <laughs> he'd do a little he'd do a few workouts beforehand and try to get a little better shape. But yeah, I I wouldn't have expected him to train. <laughs> no. So let me ask y'all a little bit more narrowed down into deer hunting on public land. Um I typically, me and my brother, we we hunt a lot of public land. And, um, I mean, we, we probably hunt four, four to five different WMAs slash public ground um, in the state of Mississippi and probably key on two. But one thing that we've done before is that if we get a lot of sign or if we put a camera out somewhere and we get a big deer on it, we will hunt that spot to death. We may not hunt it, you know, seven times in 10 days, but if we've got a big deer somewhere or we feel like we've got a big deer somewhere based off scrapes, rubs, trail, whatever, um, we're going to hunt that spot a lot. And um, I wanted to know what y'all do. You know, I've heard, we've heard different things like give it a few days. And if you don't see nothing, if you don't see him in a few days, go somewhere else what's kind of y'all's go-to um you know which i know y'all are not in the trophy hunting you're just trying to get out there and get a good you know buck if he's big and mature that's that's a plus Mm -hmm. but just killing bucks in general i mean when do you when do you decide that we've given this spot enough time and let's move on um i'd say i mean i feel like we're moving around a lot unless we like, well, I feel like we'll hunt a spot and if we feel like we've bounced around enough, like we rarely will go back to the same tree twice. So we'll maybe go in hunt a spot and if that doesn't work. We'll bounce around to somewhere close to there if we got a good feeling about it and keep hunting it like three or four times probably. But then if we don't get on nothing, then we'll bail out of there and go, go try something else. So yeah. we don't really, we do I really can't think of a time where we just hang on to a spot for more than two days, two or three days, maybe. I mean, I can only think of really one instance where me and you have done that together, and that was in Kansas a couple years ago. But we we found a spot and we hunted it hard for probably two days, uh, where we found all those bucks in there and that half rack buck, uh-huh. and uh, and then we left because the weather got sour and we were gone for like a week or ten days. Then we came back went back to the same spot and hunted it for an evening and a morning uh well an an evening and a full day actually and then we ended up bailing out of there and then killed a deer completely other spot yeah but that one we we did revisit that one because there was a bunch of big deer in there and and we kept seeing them and nobody else is hunting them so we were like we'll just we'll stay in here until we blow them out but i don't know i think i think it's hard to say there's no exact formula on on like because I know I've hunted a spot to death before on particular deer and had it work out. And I've also had it not work out. And I feel like now I would probably say I would, I would personally hunt a spot a few times. And then if it's not working, if that's where his sign has been, or you feel like he's there and it's not working after a few times, then just bail 
you can keep hunting the same deer, but just attack him from a different angle. You don't got to retreat, just attack him from a different angle. Yeah, we that's do. all you got to do. We do that a lot where it's like you'll hunt for a morning, say, and then if that don't work, then we get down and we're like scouting around until we find the next spot. And then we'll find the next spot, hunt there. Mm -hmm. And then we might keep doing that for a while if we, if we uh, are running into a bunch of sign or whatever. So how long do y'all normally, when you do that, Ted, are you talking about hunting the morning till 11, 12 o'clock, get down, scout for a few hours, and then hunt to dark? Or are you talking like, you know, you set up for a few hours and then you scout, you may climb up, you may climb up two or three different times in one day. Or are you talking about spreading that out a little bit more? Um, Like if it's during the rut, yeah, we might get hunt till 10, get down, scout around, find a different spot, climb up again hunt for a little while, do it again for the afternoon. But like earlier in the season, then we'll, we're more like hunt for the morning, get down, scout around. If we don't find anything, go try and find another spot. Like middle of the day, we scout a, a lot, especially early in the season until we find something that we have confidence in, I guess. I feel like the majority of the videos I've seen, you guys, y'all are on the ground a lot. What would you say like as far as like, do you like being on the ground more than being up in a tree or do, or do y'all, it's just like, you know, scenario by scenario. It's just like, there's not a good tree to get in. Let's just stay on the ground. I'd say it's more scenario. Like we, we usually, most times we'll have the saddle stuff with us. So we'll be going wherever. And if we find the spot we want to hunt and there's not a good tree or there's not a good tree that's close enough to where we think the deer is going to be at, then we'll make something work on the ground. But I'd say it's like 50, 50 split probably if we're in the tree or on the ground most times. Yeah. I like hunting on the, I like hunting on the ground because when stuff does go down, it's a lot more exciting on the ground. I feel like. Yeah. It's <laughs> had, had a lot of, yeah. Ted's had a lot of experiences on the ground on camera that I'm just yeah. How, uh, how do you, I can be behind burlap and barely like move and, and a deer just, and yeah. he's going to have this huge buck and he's got four sticks in front of him spaced out a foot <laughs> apart with no branches, no, no lint, like nothing. And he just threads the needle, you know, or when, I think it was last year when Jake killed that buck that y'all stalked for so freaking long. And then you just happen to have a, Nice eight point walk up behind oh, you. Lord. Yeah, when yeah. you were sitting from the yeah, that kind of stuff, I'll be honest, it pisses me off a little bit, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, it makes makes me hate you just a little bit. Right, but... <laughs> just a little bit, just a little bit. But yeah. No, I mean I think I interrupted you, Dave. What were you gonna say, brother? You don't, uh, even... I don't know. <laughs> Go ahead. No, <laughs> hey, come on, put it out. Jeez, put it out here. The worst, the worst one I saw was when Zach. I think it was Zach. He barely crawled. It might have been Jake. I don't know. They barely crawled a long ways. It was in like a ditch, a creek, and he got right to him and couldn't get a shot on the deer. It was a big buck too. I think that was Zach's in the gun bowl. Wait, is it? Didn't when there a big one like that? Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I can think, think of several that. instances where that happened with both Zach and Jake. I know. I filmed jake in north dakota two years ago uh we had four bucks walk up within bow range of him and he couldn't get a shot on any of them and we we're just crawling on them and that same year i filmed zach we had a real big eight point in minnesota come within five yards and he went to draw on him and his release was frozen oh. shut they couldn't lock on couldn't do nothing about it this deer just just walks by it five yards uh, and he's sitting there spitting on his release, trying to get it to thaw out. Oh, giving it to old Hawk Tua. There you go. Yeah, he tried to Hawk Tua. He said, Hawk Tua until she talked to you. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't How cold out. was it? Got, that's got to be freezing for for the release to be frozen. It was, yeah, it was cold. I know the next morning he killed a buck, and it was like one degree when he killed it. <laughs> and I, I think I took a picture that morning where a glass in it, and it was one below. And I like drew it out in the snow on the window and took a picture of him glassing. Uh, but the evening of the the frozen release, it was like single digits for sure. But it was also blowing snow, so it's like blowing snow on his 
on on you all over you and then it would like melt on his hand and then freeze onto the release but those were just like ground encounters that just got completely chaotic yeah the one thing that keeps me from ground hunting so much here is it's it i almost feel like ted great huh you got a lot of meth heads with guns walking yeah in. that's yeah that's yeah <laughs> caleb and them had a bunch of guys walk in and steal a bunch of stuff from them on their little on their club uh <laughs> not club but their land yeah. uh now it's like the the best place to get covered a ground hunt is is near is in a thicket kind of but i know nick nick have you hunted in mississippi yet uh, I filmed Ted deer hunt in Mississippi last year. Okay, so is it? I don't know. I'm 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 going to ask another ignorant question. Just is it different out there than it is here when it comes to being on the ground? Because I've seen Ted do it. I've seen you personally do it a bunch of times, and and uh, the woods don't look a whole lot different than some of the woods we got here. And I'm just, we don't hear of hardly anybody ground hunting with a bow, that is, and being successful. Um, did y'all see, you know, some pretty good spots here that you could do that with, even with it being so flat? Or are you pretty much going to have to be in a tree when you come down here? I think we were in a tree every time. Oh, yeah, we were. We were in a tree every time. I feel like the woods down there, there's a lot of times where it's just like there's no underbrush down there or understory in the yeah. wood so you almost feel like you have to be in the tree otherwise yeah. you're just going to be sitting there sticking out like sore thumb a lot mm -hmm. of the time so like a lot of times when we're hunting up in iowa or wherever there's like a lot of crp and thick creek bottoms whatever that you can get in and there's i feel like there is just a lot more opportunity for getting on the ground yeah. up here i agree do you yeah. feel like the do you feel like the deer are more skittish in Miss like when you're here? Do you feel like they're definitely more on like alert than they are in the Midwest as far as just like I don't know, you can't get away with as much movement or whatever like that? Um, I'd say there's definitely a lot less of them down there for sure. But wouldn't I can think of one we were hunting in Mississippi last fall and me and Warb had like a couple bucks and a bunch of does underneath of us. And there was people shooting all around us, like rifles going off and whatever, muzzleloaders or whatever. And uh, those deer didn't pay any attention to it at all. But, but that was just one. But scenario. that spot was thick. So because me thick. and you went and hunted there, and all the timber all around it is that timber we're talking about, where it's flat, no understory, you can see for two hundred yards. But this one patch that they were in was like a bunch. There was some blow down in it, and it, was, it had grown up a little bit. And there was grasses that were like probably like shoulder high on a deer. And I think that was just thick enough where they felt comfortable. Yeah. And like that was an area that if you could see, you could probably ground hunt in there. But it also might have been too tall where you couldn't sit on the ground. You wouldn't be able to see them mm -hmm. or not see them far enough away to be able to get a shot. Yeah. Yeah, it's just it's just weird because like I've hunted the Midwest some, but not not as much as y'all have. But like it's just I don't know. I feel like you like it's like the deer here. Sometimes it's like they just walk around. They just like look for you in the trees, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> I don't what know. Do you think? I, well, I do want to ask that question. I missed I missed what you said right in there, Ted, because my son came out buck naked and was making a lot of noise, so I had to change scenes here. Uh what did you say there's a lot less of here? You feel like there's a lot less of here? Was it big deer or? Just deer in general, just deer, deer density. Yeah. Deer density? Yeah. Really? Hmm. I thought, I thought, it, well, it was like four or five years ago, they said that Mississippi had like 2 million deer, 1.9 or 1.7 or 2 million. Uh, and I always have thought that we've got a lot of deer. We just don't have a lot of big mature bucks. Yeah. And I, I say, I believe that's because we've got a three month long rifle season, uh, mm -hmm. which I take full advantage of by the way. And I will every year that they have it. <laughs> but, uh, but y'all, y'all saying that, you know, y'all, y'all think that, you know, just sheer deer density is not it's what it is. It's, it's probably because, we don't see as many deer when we're hunting down there 
I mean, as yeah, what we're used to. I guess. My my Mississippi deer hunting experience is, I mean, it's so small compared to yours. I mean, I've only hunted in Mississippi for deer for about five, six days, seven days. Yeah. And so in those, which we got beat up, I mean, oh, we yeah. went many days, didn't see a deer. Um, so in my mind, I'm just like, well, maybe deer density is just lower, you know, because everybody's saying, well, we ain't seeing a ton or only seeing one or two or whatever. So in my mind, I'm going, okay, maybe it's just low. But if it's two million deer in the whole state, then it's probably not the case. You know, deer density is probably fine. Probably is more of a testament to the hunting pressure. Yeah, because there's definitely a lot of hunting pressure. I mean, it, you know where we were hunting. Yeah, there's a lot of hunting pressure. Yeah, and see, that's where you guys were without burning it. That's a that's a spot that people come a long way to hunt from. They they travel a lot to go there and hunt. And uh, and there's a few state there's a few areas in the state that that people do that for. Um, but I think you can find pockets of areas. Um, in this state that have higher density than, mm. than others when it comes to public ground. Uh, Cause I know one last year I missed, I had a terrible year last year. I missed uh two deer and hit one with a gun, uh, with a gun, hit one with a gun, didn't find it. It's huge deer, biggest deer of my life. And uh, missed one at 70 yards with a 308. And, um, I don't think I've ever said that on camera, but it doesn't feel good for sure. I mean, it sounds uh, like you had a great year. You just, you just didn't do it. You just that, didn't yeah. Do it. It, it was, it was one of those years that, that, um, I wanted to be violent towards somebody. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was, I was really wanting somebody to be at the gate or come walking up on me and start talking smack, preferably somebody a lot smaller than me, but I, I, I was wanting to, you know, to get some of that negative energy off of me. Um, uh, <laughs> When did y'all, and this is more, sorry, Nick, this is more of a Ted question. <laughs> so, cause I know, I know you, you've been with them since, like you said, 2018 or whatever. Um, what was the year that y'all knew for a fact, like this is going to be big. We're, we're, this, this is going to, this is going to be big and don't be humble about it. Don't say we never knew you. I know you had, I know you knew. Come on now. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest we never really talked about it but from when from my perspective i guess i started in 2018 and we had like 20,000 subscribers when i started and i was an intern at that time and i think by like the middle of 2019 we were up to 100,000 or 200,000 something like that and then that, I guess that's when I was like, all right, yeah, this thing's really taking off. This is going to be good. And it was good for me because then I could stick around and keep keep doing it. <laughs> so I'd say right around then, when we broke the 100,000 mark, I was pretty optimistic about it. Is everybody full-time that y'all named earlier? The nine crew, the nine-person crew, is everybody pretty much full-time? Yeah. Yeah. This is all any of us does. Yeah. Is this. When were y'all, when were y'all able to, was it around 2019 when like you guys, cause I'm sure, did you, did you work at the time when you joined THP? Uh, I had just graduated high school like a couple months before. And then I was, I had a job that I was doing for like two months during the summer. And then I got the internship. So, wow. and then got right into it. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy man everybody else out here like yeah you gotta work 10 20 years before you can do your dream nick's like nah I'll do it after the fifth period to be yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> after my athletic period i'm gonna yeah. it's, it's gonna head off yeah i'm gonna jump right into it yeah that's awesome i got i got another question for uh so when y'all were when y'all were hunting public I know y'all ride around a lot, like glass and fields. Do y'all rely more on that or like more on like topography type stuff, like looking at maps or you kind of find it on the map and then you ride and kind of see what you see? I think I'd, get, say, right? I'd say find it on the map, like especially if it's a place that we hadn't, we don't get to be at regularly. It's like find something on the map and be like, you know, I like this. Let's go look at it and go look at it. And then either on your way to looking at it 
you find something you like better or see something, a deer or whatever, or you get there and you're like, okay, there's no deer, this is trash, you know, just bounce out, go somewhere else. I'd say it's a, a lot of look, pick it out on the map and then scout everything on the way there. If if there's, you know, public between you and that, that point uh, and then go about it that way and use the vehicle a lot. Yeah. That's a what lot. I was going to say is I feel like a lot of the times we'll pick something out, like you said, and we'll spend a good while driving around. Like if we're, if we pick out a, whole piece of public not necessarily one little block or something mm -hmm. but if we are like this piece of public looks interesting we'll spend a good amount of time driving around the whole thing look just getting familiar with it i guess yeah i know i know like uh we went to kansas a couple of years ago we had a spot picked out on the map drove all the way there got there and then drove around for the evening and we were like this spot is trash so we camped and we we're like we're rolling as soon as it gets you know, early enough to roll, we're leaving. And we did, and we picked up, and we hauled ass out of there and went somewhere else. And then got to that spot and realized this is not as much a trash, but it's still kind of trash. <laughs> doo-doo, literally, because when we got out of the truck and I set my bag down, I set it down next to some human doo-doo <laughs> at the tote ramp. <laughs> uh -huh. And then we we packed our stuff up again and then rolled out of there, and then we, then we found the spot that was the spot. Yeah. And that's where you ended up killing a deer. Mm-hmm. Does yeah. does does human pressure play probably the biggest factor? Like if you pull up and there's like a bunch of trucks, you're like, nah, I'm out of here. Or does that does that not deter you sometimes? Maybe hunt closer to the truck, that kind of thing. Uh, I would say most if we pull up and there's a bunch of trucks, we're bailing out of there most yeah. times. That's what happened on this in this story. That first spot we went to in Kansas was trucks. We made made some laps and it was like every parking spot there was a truck. And we're like, okay, let's. Let's get out of here. I mean, yeah. I feel like after you do it for a while, you just get to a point. It gets easier and easier to just pull the plug on something because you know if you just keep digging, keep trying to find something different, you're gonna find this, mm -hmm. this spot, and you'll have you have a good feeling about it once you once you do pull up on it. I guess. Yeah. You guys probably see a lot of that though in Iowa, don't you? With it, with as as big as I was gotten in the last 10, 15 years, I'm sure you guys at a certain point see a lot of, you know, when you go to your regular spots or whatever, you got to yeah. see a lot of. No, I mean, definitely not as much there as any other state, but there, I remember a couple of years ago, there was a spot that we really liked and it gets to like the first week in November. That's when a lot of people start rolling in. And we went by this spot and we could glass the parking lot from a ways. And there was a truck there like every day for 10 or 12 days, probably. Every time we pulled up there, there was a truck there already. So it's one of those spots. So, yeah, that's one of those spots that you got one truck there. That place is pretty much covered. Yeah, because mm -hmm. there was only one way in and out of there. Basically, oh, wow. You park there and then you go, everybody goes like the same access path up in there pretty much so are you are you from iowa ted or did you like move there after getting you know into the hunting industry i know hey, we've covered that. this already <laughs> you were part of the podcast no i'm saying like did you grow up in iowa i guess yeah i did okay yeah. okay yeah i knew you said you lived there now i just didn't know if you were like you just grew kidding up. caleb it's okay we'll edit it he's oh, <laughs> like I'm I'm, you know i gotta be careful I got to make sure Caleb knows I'm joking most of the time. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're up there, and I still live there now. That's all. What do y'all think about – what's what do y'all think, like, Illinois, Iowa, and Kansas have in common that, like, Missouri don't? Because it's kind of – I live in St. Louis for a while and hunted out from St. Louis, hunted, you know, north, north Missouri a little bit. But it's like Illinois, Iowa, and Kansas are like – just huge bucks and it's like in missouri they got big bucks but it's not it's not the same it's weird and but it's like right in the middle of all of them mm -hmm. uh i don't know it might have something to do with the 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 gun hunting maybe because missouri's got a little more lenient uh gun hunting regulations i know you can hunt with uh pretty sure in missouri you can hunt with regular like center fire rifles whatever i mean I know in Iowa you have to shotgun or straight wall cartridge. 
I don't know what Illinois' gun season is like. I know Kansas's gun season is super short. Um, maybe Missouri's is a little more lenient in the way to where more more deer are getting killed, more big deer are getting killed. Because uh, it's like it's the same kind of deer that's growing in Missouri that grows in Kansas and Iowa and Illinois. I mean, it's the same deer. Yeah. Uh, so they got the potential to get just as big. So maybe it's just the way that you're able to hunt in Missouri kind of affects that a little bit. I don't know. I'm just I kind would, of speculating. One thing that I would think is like Iowa and Nebraska. I, I've never been to Illinois for deer hunting, but Iowa and Nebraska compared to Missouri, like there's a more, a lot more open ground out there in Iowa and mm -hmm. Nebraska compared to Missouri. Like a lot of times we go to Missouri and we're somewhere in the woods. Yeah. So that definitely makes it a little bit tougher. Like Iowa and Nebraska, you can drive around and do more glassing. And I feel like that helps you out quite a bit. You yeah. That probably does. I mean, it. just, yeah. Being able to see them is a huge, oh yeah, huge piece of it. Mm -hmm. Where, where would you, where would you say, you know, somebody like me, who's been to one state, Washington state, um, that I've hunted deer outside of my home state. Um, what would you say, like, the timeline a person needs to hunt? If you're going to take off work uh, and take vacation, do you need, like, is it, like, mandatory new ground you never stepped on, per se? Or are you, to, to be successful, do you need, like, a minimum of, like, seven days to where you can scout for a certain time and then hunt? Or what would you, what would you advise on that? What would y'all advise on that? I would say seven to, to 10 days probably is what I would think. I agree. Seven to 10, anything over 10, you start getting burnt out and then you need yeah. a reset. Cause we found when we hit, we hit 10, I mean, we have little success after 10. We got to have a, a hard reset for a, a few days at least to kind of get out of the mindset of what you're doing and then kind of look at it a different light. Anything less than six really or seven is like, you know, you you really start getting into them on day five, day six, you know, and you get your chance on day seven. It's like there's that window there. So you can't go too short. Four days is like too short. Then you're rushing. Everything is like impulsive. All your decisions are going to be rushed. And uh, I think seven days, seven to ten days is that magic window. But, I mean, it's a big ask, too, especially if you got a family, if you got a job, whatever. It's a big ask yeah. to go hunt for 10 days yeah what about all right what about this when you when you're scouting y'all get y'all might be the same but you might be different Scra scrapes or rubs mm. oh, i'd say scrapes yeah probably. i think scrapes i feel scrapes. like it's one that's visited more often and it's easier easier to tell when something's been just there with a scrape versus a rub yeah you know yeah i'm going scrapes yeah, that's, nice. I've never been asked that question. I've never been asked if I like scrapes or rubs more or what I prefer. But yeah, scrapes. Yeah, that's pretty much everybody knows scrapes, but I ask dumb questions. So I just wanted to say I've hunted rubs. That one of the deer that I showed y'all in there, I killed off a rub. We were literally yeah. down a power line and I saw a fresh rub and I was like, this is where I'm hunting. And I spined him at zero yards. And yeah. I shot him five <laughs> four times with all my arrows and still didn't kill him. That's just that, that's just that, uh, that spidey sense, you know, whenever you feel it, sometimes you, you start feeling birdie and your tail starts wagging a little bit. You just got to hunt it. It doesn't yeah. matter. It could just be a broken twig. If your tail's wagging, you might as well sit it. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> well, well guys, Caleb, do you have anything else for them? I don't think so. Awesome. Okay. Well, guys, I know, first of all, I've been doing a lot of talking, and you can tell I'm pretty new. We're pretty new. I'm pretty new at podcasting. Caleb's more the professional here. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I sure do enjoy. I'm I'm, I'm glad that y'all came on with us. I appreciate y'all taking time out of your hog killing to talk to us and share your story and some experiences, and hopefully we'll have a chance to to do it again sometime. But, uh, yeah, but man, yeah. I appreciate y'all coming on. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for having us. Yeah, we uh, hopefully one of these days we'll we'll get together and maybe be able to do some hunting. Y'all send us pins on like you know good spots in different states later, 
yeah, yeah uh, for sure don't worry about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, sure. no, <laughs> no, guys, we appreciate y'all getting on. Uh, y'all, uh, y'all, y'all kill the mess out of them. Y'all going back to hog hunt, right? Doing some. Yeah. Y'all, all right, gun or bow? Uh, we'll be bow hunting tonight. Hey. Hey. So you gonna be bow hunting that night or in the no, evening? No, just this evening. Okay, okay. just like, we're gonna be bow hunting. Now, okay. who knows? Tonight, when we get back, we might get the thermals out of the closet and go back after them. <laughs> i got we'll you we'll see where it leads us <laughs> i got you awesome well guys like i said y'all uh y'all ever around in this part hit us up man we'd love to we'd love to see y'all and buy you buy you some lunch and uh get some pens from you so anyway <laughs> all right <laughs> i appreciate it boys y'all have a good one yes sir yeah. thank you